Hello everyone, and welcome to Biopedia. On the show today, we discuss coanoflagellates, the closest biological relatives of the animal kingdom, and the 1.3 million species that this group is known to entail. So, the animal kingdom is estimated to have gained most of its diversity in the last half a billion years. However, it is definitely older than this. In fact, Fossils from 710 million years ago have been found containing steroids which are predominantly produced by certain species of sponge, while molecular evidence suggests that the last common ancestor of all animals lived around 770 million years ago. Although I should say that I have seen a new scientist story from 2009 place the early divisions within the animal kingdom at around 800 million years ago, which if true would suggest that they are even older again. For a bit of context as to how long ago all of this is, the ancient supercontinent Rodinia, a precursor to Pangaea, would still have existed at this point. So, coanoflagellates are protist, which is essentially an unhandy classification for any eukaryote that isn't a fungus, plant or animal. This classification means that protists are a very diverse and variable group, but we'll leave that discussion to one side for now. One reason why coanoflagellates specifically are thought of as the closest living relatives of animals is that some cells within modern-day basal animals look startlingly similar. For instance, consider the sponge, which is the animal group that split off from other animals before any other. A sponge gets its nutrients by extracting nutrients and microorganisms from the water column. Essentially, water passes into the sponge through pores in the side, and is ejected via the opening at the top. In the meantime, specialist cells called coanocytes, or collar cells, capture food in a specialised collar structure, before passing it on to other cells deep within the sponge's tissue. The flagella of these coanocytes beat in order to create a water current through the sponge, which enables new water and new microorganisms to keep flowing through and arriving. The reason why all of this is significant is that coanocytes have striking morphological similarities to coanoflagellates, the protist. Both of these cells have the flagellum and the collar structure that I mentioned just now, and in essence, they look virtually identical. It's important to note, however, that there are other sources of evidence pointing to the close evolutionary relationship between coanoflagellates and animals. For example, coanoflagellates are able to form multicellular colonies, much like animals are in essence, by use of cadherin proteins. The mechanism which is used to stick cells together is hypothesized to have been reshuffled a bit in animals, resulting in the same overall mechanism but with the same or similar proteins simply being used in a different way, as well as there also being one extra protein which is not found in coanoflagellates. Another piece of evidence is that, while these coanocyte cells have been also been found in basal animals other than sponges, they have never been found in more distant groups. I should, however, mention that this relationship has historically been a contentious issue. A 2009 paper detailing the relationship between different sponge groups pointed out that there are many differences in ultrastructure between coanocytes and coanoflagellates, despite the similarities we mentioned just now. For example, coanoflagellate microvilli are able to contract, while coanocyte microvilli cannot. The group writing the paper therefore posited that this similarity between the two is an example of convergent evolution, with coanoflagellates and coanocytes in animals independently evolving the same characteristics. While this is not the view that was expressed in my later textbook on the period, this whole discussion does demonstrate once again that science is a changeable field and new discoveries can upend our understanding of the world. As always, thank you all for listening. For any questions or comments, or even topic suggestions, head over to the show's email address. Until next time, have a great week, everyone.